Hello, welcome to Advanced Gaming. Today we are going to look at custom ore generation using Thermal Expansion's World Generator Overrides. Today, I mentioned in my previous video, I actually override several vanilla items in order to get some more resources to produce all the technology that that is needed. For instance, redstone doesn't really generate all that much in the vanilla game because there's not really that much use for it on building as a whole. However, when you get into the technology aspect of it, there are a lot of things that use redstone. So in the COFH in config, you have world and in there you typically have thermal foundation ores. Now these ores are generated with their specific settings that they specified and it's a pretty simple template. Um, this template here references how it's going to be generated. Uniform um, is pretty much a vanilla style you know, little little blobs here and there. There are different settings for template, but I think that uniform is still the best. Um, the block you specify, which block it is, it can also take on metadata as shown in this example here. Um, since all thermal foundation ores are the same except for the metadata, that takes their care of that. Now the way the block is specified is the mod name, the colon, and the ore name. So vanilla would be Minecraft colon and whatever the ore is. So you can see in vanilla, you can see Minecraft colon stone. You can see material, you can see just a whole lot of stuff going on here. Um, now cluster size, the num clusters, these are chunk based. So num cluster specifies how many times it's going to try to to generate the ore. Cluster size tells it how many ores to generate every time it's successful. Um, it will try to generate these. Now that doesn't mean that it's they're always going to be like this due to caves and due to other structures you're going to run into times when these are cut off so um, getting these to be very large um, you'll have a lot of ores below your feet min height and max height is the y value heights that these the, the, these generate in retrogen tells it to if it hasn't spawned in a chunk to try to do so this helps new worlds get all the new ores if you add the mod after you start playing. The biome restrictions and the dimension restrictions are just that. Um, the biome restrictions none means it's going to generate in all biomes. However, the dimension it's only going to generate in the dimension zero, which is the overworld. Negative one is the nether and one is the end. So I went in and with the vanilla, I let's say I don't want as much dirt underground as normal. So I'll set this to maybe five and three. So it's only going to try five times and it's only going to spawn three whenever it does so. I really don't like gravel underground, so let's set this to one and then one. So this material should not be indented like that. So block tells it which block it's going to try to spawn, which in this case is Minecraft colon dirt. Material, this is the material that it's going to try to replace. So it's going to try to replace Minecraft stone with the dirt. So coal, iron, gold, and lapis. But you can also override existing 
mod ores or ores that don't generally spawn. So in my new overrides, you can see I have emeralds in here. And emeralds I override to generate, to, to try to generate five clusters with 10 each between the heights of 1 and 25. So very deep, but in all biomes. So none, no biome restrictions, and only in the overworld. Now, Certiscorch and Sar Charge Certiscorch, you can see from Applied Energistics 2, that's the mod name, and then the name of the block, tile.org quartz and tile.org quartz charged. Um, still Minecraft Stone, and with this setup, I dramatically reduce the amount of regular Certus Quartz that's being generated and replace it with charged Certus Quartz. So I'm not getting two different types of ores when I mine, I'm just getting charged Certus Quartz. Because you can charge regular Certus through the charger. It's, it's a fairly easy process to do. Shiny ore, this is not generally generated ore. They do have ores for it, so I went ahead and started spawning it um, between very deep 1 and 25. This is the area of the world where lava spawns, and so it's pretty treacherous to try to mine down that far. Um, same settings. Redstone, I really boost redstone um, because of all of the tech mods that use redstone in, in vast, vast quantities. So I went ahead and overrode redstone to be to to generate pretty large amounts. I mean it's gonna try to generate redstone in large quantities. It's not always gonna be successful, but it's gonna try. Um, um, diamond I increased slightly. Um, I increase the max height a little bit and I increase the amount of diamond that's used. I don't really use a lot of diamonds, but it's nice to have when I do need them. And finally, quartz for the nether quartz. Like I said in a previous video, I use a lot of nether quartz in some of my builds and it's nice to be able to go to the nether and mine nether quartz um, in large amounts so I'm not stripping the entire, I'm not having to travel hundreds and hundreds of blocks away just to get to my nether quartz. So in this you can see there's a big difference in di but dimensions restrictions. Here it's blacklisted but here it's whitelisted and um, as you can see I whitelist the nether which is negative one but I don't restrict any biomes because there's just one biome in the nether. And then min height and max height, you can see, generates almost to the top of the nether. There is a space very top that doesn't get any quartz. Um, and that's so I can create quarries and stuff at the very top and just mine down. Pretty efficient way of generating quartz. So if you wanted to add, say, different ores in here. You can just copy and paste. You can create a new file, a .json file, a JSON file, and just copy and paste one of these templates. Um, specify your block, specify the material it's going to replace, and then set your settings. So anytime you want to set these to do Tinker's Construct or IC2, any any rule mod that you have that you can specify generation, you can do this. There is a world generating manual. Um, you can copy the link from the top here. I can paste it into the description. Um, this gives a textual version of everything that we covered here, as well as the ability to wait different materials so um, there's a probability of one material or another being generated it gives a little bit more randomness to the world um, and with that I will close this out and see you at the next video